NVIDIA extends its rally. How much more room is there to run? Let's talk about that with John Vin, KeyBank Capital Markets Equity Research Analyst. John, it's good to, to see you here. So certainly a massive milestone here for NVIDIA, something that no other chip company has been able to reach just yet. What do you make of this milestone and how much more room NVIDIA has to run? Yeah, it's um, certainly impressive. Um, I think it's um, something that they have earned you know obviously what we've seen with their most recent earnings result is uh probably the one of the biggest beats in the tech industry seen in kind of probably over a decade right i mean expectations were that they were going to guide for seven plus billion in revenues they came in at over 11 billion dollars in revenues um which is uh, absolutely phenomenal our price target for nvidia is 500 dollars. we see uh certainly more upside from from these levels um at this point uh, John, we heard Brad talk about where the bullishness has come through from. He talked about the conversation being driven uh, by NVIDIA on the issue of AI, the partnerships in place, but at its core, it is about the technology. Help us understand how far ahead NVIDIA is compared to some of their competitors when it comes to GPUs, particularly at the center of AI. Yeah, um, I actually think that their differentiation and why they're so much further ahead is really has to do with their software, right? They've got uh, kind of a CUDA, CUDA software platform, and then they're also involved with all the um, researchers who've developed all these different AI models. And if you think back to just the background of how NVIDIA got it started in gaming, I mean, they've got millions of uh, basically AI developers that are focused on the NVIDIA ecosystem. And it's really the software ecosystem that's going to give them uh, a sustainable advantage for, for quite some time. Yeah, John, what does that timeline look like just in terms of the advantage that they have now? Is this something that maybe they would be worried about competitors catching up on in five years, 10 years? Just give us a better sense of how big of that first mover advantage they have. Yeah, um, you know, I, I would say that they've got at least kind of a five year kind of gap with them and their next nearest competitor, which is probably going to be an AMD. But I would also say that this is a situation where this is a rising tide is going to lift all chips. And, you know, there are going to be multiple beneficiaries here related to generative AI, but certainly NVIDIA is going to be the, the outsized beneficiary here, given its uh, full position. And there's certainly a lot of people who are watching what's been playing out with NVIDIA saying, it's great, NVIDIA briefly hit that trillion dollar mark, and yet, did I miss the boat? What about the valuation specifically on NVIDIA? What are other names that you think investors should be watching if it is about a rising tide lifting all boats? Yeah, um, you know, we think uh, three other names come to mind. Um, I would say AMD, Marvell, and uh, and, and Broadcom, you look at AMD, you know, obviously they, they're kind of an emerging competitor in GPUs on the data center front. They've got their MI300 product coming out later this year. They've got pretty de minimis market share in this market. And we actually think that they're actually gonna put up some substantial uh, design wins later this year. I think they're, they're rolling out an MI300 uh, AI training instance at Microsoft in Q4, which I think is gonna generate uh, meaningful incremental revenues for them. Uh, Marvell uh, has a really strong position with its uh, semi-custom cloud optimized silicon business. And they've also got kind of an optical uh, interconnect business that is really a kind of a key enabler of these AI data centers. And then lastly, you know, Broadcom reports uh, later this week on Thursday, uh, they are kind of one of the primary uh, uh, manufacturers of um, Google's kind of TPU uh, custom ASIC silicon, which is a key uh, chipset that's used in kind of AI training and inference for, for Google. John, what about the potential risks of this when it comes to the bullish outlook here for NVIDIA? So many investors jumping on board, but on the flip side of it, some of those risks and geopolitics, how do you see that playing into some of the uncertainty that we could see within the sector? Yeah, I think there's a couple risks here, right? One, um, on the geopolitical side, right? Uh, we, the, the U.S. government has, is obviously involved with kind of a geopolitical economic war with China, and they've already levied 
uh, sanctions already related to AI chips and what NVIDIA can and cannot ship to the Chinese. And obviously, um, you know, we, we only see uh, these geopolitical tensions only escalate from here, right? So obviously, if there are, are additional sanctions levied, that creates, um, you know, risk to NVIDIA because China is an important part of their data center market. I, I think the second risk to NVIDIA is there's such a dominant player in this market that they're able to realize just outside the economics here. Um, you know, they're, they're probably getting 75, 80% gross margins on their uh, data center business. And if you look at the challenge of generative AI is the cost is probably the biggest challenge, right? The cost per query for generative AI queries like dollar per query, you compare that to a Google search query, which is one one hundredth of a penny. And there's really no business model in place right now. It's a very emerging market. So every CSP um, enterprise business who's kind of focused on generative AI is trying to figure out ways to lower the cost. And one of the ways in which you could do that is look at alternative solutions, which are pretty limited in the marketplace right now. Uh, John, going back to the geopolitical risk you highlighted though, when you think about how important the Chinese market is to NVIDIA, and, and the semiconductor industry increasingly being squeezed between the West and China. Um, is there enough demand? You take out the Chinese market, is there enough demand to hit those revenue targets we're talking about with NVIDIA, particularly around AI? Um, I think if there's a sanction where the Chinese market becomes heavily restricted in terms of kind of these generative AI chips that NVIDIA can ship, I think it would be really hard for, for them to kind of hit some of the kind of the high expectations in, in data center that, that investors have. Um, it, it's just too big of a market opportunity um, if, if you kind of remove that for them. All right, John Vin, great to have you here. We're looking at a chart of NVIDIA up just over 3% today, hitting that $1 trillion market cap. Thanks so much for joining. Thanks for having me. Well, another